Bitcoin is much smaller than you think. You don't need a lot of Bitcoin to be part of the top holders. If you hold one Bitcoin, you're part of the top 2% of Bitcoin holders. If you hold 0.1 Bitcoin, you're part of the top 10% of Bitcoin holders. Now that's part of the Bitcoin holders. Imagine how much Bitcoin you have compared to all of the investors. The investors that also hold property and stocks and bonds and precious metals that might not yet have diversified to Bitcoin. Let's look at the ownership distribution of Bitcoin over time in this video. The Bitcoin blockchain is transparent and so we can see how many Bitcoin does each wallet hold. What we see here on this website is the breakdown of different holder sizes. At the top are the smaller wallets, at the bottom are the whales. And we're looking at the wallets that hold at least one Bitcoin. You can see when you've got that one Bitcoin, you're already among the top 2.5%, right? When we add this up. So the top 2.5% of Bitcoin holders, they hold 93% of all of Bitcoin. If you hold 0.1 Bitcoin, then you're among the top 11 or 12% of holders and 98.41% of all of Bitcoin are in those wallets. So you don't have to own hundreds of Bitcoins to be the top 1%. You only have to hold maybe two or three Bitcoin. And as said, that's only the Bitcoin crowd. And the Bitcoin crowd is a small, small subsegment of the entirety of investors that might consider at some point in time to diversify at least partially into Bitcoin. Now, how is this Bitcoin distribution developing over time? Is this spreading more diversely to smaller and smaller wallets? Or is this actually accumulating more and more into smaller hands? With fiat currency, we know that there's wealth concentration, right? That there's more and more fiat being held by fewer and fewer people. With Bitcoin though, that's different. And we can find this out with the Wayback Machine. So there's this website, Wayback Machine or Internet Archive, where you can enter any website and you can look at that website state in the past. So we can check out this website, how it looked like, say, at the beginning of the year or one and a half years ago or two and a half years ago. So let's do exactly that. This is how it looks today. This is how it looked at the beginning of the year. And see how there are less addresses for 1 to 10 Bitcoin. Now we are at 854,000. At the beginning of the year, we had been at 824,000. At the beginning of 2022, it was at 667,000. At the beginning of 2021, 676. 2020, 628. 2019, 555. And so we can continue. This number tends to decline over time. So we're looking further and further in the past and the number of wallets that hold at least one Bitcoin declines. In other words, over time, more and more Bitcoin is held by the smallish wallets. Bitcoin moves from the mega whales to all of retail. And we can also look at this in chart form. This is the number of wallets that hold at least 1000 Bitcoin. And this is not really growing since May of 2019. And it is going down since February of 2021, right? That's the orange line. The black line is the price. So that orange line isn't really growing anymore. The very large wallets aren't growing in number. But when we look at the smallish wallets, right? The wallets that hold at least one Bitcoin, this is very steadily increasing. This is an even more steady increase. The wallets that hold at least 0.1 Bitcoin. Look at how this almost doubled in the last five years, right? Bitcoin went from 20K to now 30K, but the number of wallets that hold at least 0.1 Bitcoin went from 2.4 million to currently 4.4 million. Yeah, the addresses with 0.01 Bitcoin, so that's now $300, also a very steady growth. So to be part of the top 2.5% club, you need to hold one Bitcoin, but over time that club is growing. Bitcoin becomes more and more decentralized in its number of holders. The number of holders are increasing. And that's probably one reason why those crashes tend to slightly decline over time. Right? In the early days, we saw 90% crashes, then 80% crashes. Now the recent crash was only 70%. 
And as time goes on and as Bitcoin grows in market cap, those crashes will go less and less, which on the one hand is a positive because the asset is maturing, but on the other hand, there's also less of an opportunity to buy low. So as an asset class matures, the opportunities dwindle. So let's take advantage of the currently low prices as much as we can. Feel free to give this a like. And if you've got Telegram, consider joining us. It's Bitcoin Strategy Channel. Simply search for this within the Telegram app or click the link down below. I hang around there regularly. Looking very much forward to chatting with you. Bye-bye.